What's up guys, it's Michael Shallow Reefing, coming back at you with another video, and today I'm gonna to be showing my 200 gallon tank to a bunch of seventh grade science students. So let's get into this tank overview. So this is my 200 gallon Innovate Marine tank. It is six feet long, 30 inches front to back, and it is 22 inches tall. It holds coral and fish from various parts of the ocean. A lot of these fish are captive bred, which means they were grown in captivity and were not taken off the reef. So like this harptail blenny, this striped blenny, these designer clownfish, all of them were captive bred. There are some other fish that you can't really captive breed yet, like this mandarin dragonet that's kind of hiding in the background, and this flame angel, and of course, Dory the hippo tang. Now that you know, I've been in the hobby for a while. A lot of these fish can be captive bred, but when I got them, they weren't really captive bred yet. And these fish can live to be 20 years old, which is much older than most of our, you know, pets that we have at home. But enough about fish, we're all here for the coral. And some of these coral in here are really old. So some of them go back to 2014, which would be this giant Duncan colony here which is about the size of a volleyball. And I have broken it apart many times and sold off different fragments or frags of it. And it's still huge. And you have some corals over here, which I got from friends a long time ago who were in this hobby before me in 2015. So these corals are probably close to 20 years old, maybe. I mean, they've been in the hobby for a very long time. One of the coolest things I like about the coral are the little polyps and getting those polyps really extending out into the water column, that means the corals are healthy. So you can kind of see back here, they're kind of flowing gently in the breeze. Well, gently in the current, I should say, not the breeze. So if you look in the tank, there's just corals from all different varieties and species. And there's probably about 50 different types of coral in the tank that are all unique. I think one of the coolest ways to look at the tank is to look at it from a top down perspective you get to see all the different structures and uh, different colorations of the coral much better than if you're looking at it from a you know side on view and this is kind of what you would see if you were scuba diving and then a lot of these corals are from different parts of the ocean so you have to be careful which corals go where because a lot of corals like to sting each other or they like to overshadow each other so this coral here kind of died out because this coral was growing over top of it and I had to break it back and throw it to the side of the tank. And you can see some of the clownfish, they're kind of hosting in this, treating it like it's an anemone, even though it's not. Their natural instinct, even when they are captive bred, is to host. So I switched on the blue light and you can kind of see that the corals pop a little bit better under a blue light. So they have these things called chromoproteins, which allow them to fluoresce under actinic lighting, which is blue lighting. You can kind of see how everything just looks a little bit different, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more colorful, especially those greens and those peach colors. They really start to pop. And some corals that you didn't notice before, if you look really closely at the structure, they just scream vibrant colors. So that's a quick overview of the tank and some of the corals. And as you'll see, I have brought some corals in and you guys get to ask me a bunch of questions about all the different types of coral and what I keep in the tank. 